Leave here right now. Premier, what are they doing? House arrest. They don't know that we're here yet. Of course they know, particularly Zhou Tu Mi Yuan. Otherwise, we wouldn't be detained here. Mi Yuan went to Chu Wu, didn't he? Has he come back to Ying? Mi Yuan isn't the only one who is fighting against Qin. Did you attend the Nisang meeting? It was like this. This is different. This trip to Chu will be <laughs> the easiest I've made in a while. No need for heated words, only smiles and a few gifts. Then why are we detained? Don't worry. Prince Zilang will come to save us soon. I don't understand. Why do you invest in that treacherous official? So many people of Chu are close to Qin. Dukes and grandmen, in-laws, to Qin's royalty that can give opinions to the king of Chu. The people who can offer advice are now silent because they know that the king of Chu has a particular trust for Mi Yuan. And Zilla is the son of the king, so he dares to say anything. <laughs> the officials treat him with scorn, while the king of Chu will at least listen to him because, you see, when the king of Chu was young, he was a good-for-nothing just like the prince Zilla. Been settled. <sighs> hey, 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 hey. Your clothes suit you rather well, huh? Are you making fun of the fact I was a fishmonger? No, I'm not. The clothes you're wearing they make you a common person. Hey, I'm joking, I'm joking. You're a small mind, if that makes you angry, huh? You are stumbling at every step, but you are still in the mood for jokes. And you sniffed at me, you big snob. All right, all right, all right. Let's see if you can take me out. Your nose is running. I'll change my clothes, huh? really suit you. Very much. How so? A snob must wear such vulgar and coarse clothes. I'll get even with you when we're back in Chin. Let's go. <laughs> Come this way. As the Jin Premier, I have come here to cede territory, but I am refused admittance to the court by His Highness. Chu really knows how to treat its guests. Don't complain. I have sent someone to the court. He will be able to meet His Highness in a few days. Tell me, how many days? Uh, I... I don't know. Also, this time, I brought some things. 
I hope you appreciate them. Some say it is the king of pearls in the entire East Sea, but I don't believe it. Pearls are normally as white as snow. There shouldn't be a black one such as that thing. Oh my! Isn't that the black dragon pearl? Huh. You know of it? Yes, yes. It's said that in ancient times, when Emperors Yan and Huang were fighting, it went dark and the people got confused. Emperor Huang took the pearl and the sandstorm, stopped in a second, and the army of Emperor Huang took the chance, and defeated Emperor Yan, and society became stable. The pearl disappeared. It is said that it was dropped into a deep pool guarded by a black dragon. However, it is rumored to have been gestated for hundreds of years by an oyster in the East Sea. I also heard that it is matte and lightless in the day and is bright as the moon at night. Great. You can have it. If you like it, that is. Huh. Oh. The Premier. Please. Huh. Don't spend money on me. Why stand on ceremony? When I come back from the court, I'll bring more gifts that I think you'll appreciate. Premier, I like the way you are. And I appreciate your frankness. How so? <laughs> you are on when accepting money. Ha! Huh? I must keep what you just said in mind. Why? Hmm? Why must you keep it in mind? It sums up the principle of business nicely. Hey, Yiwei, I invite you to act in accordance with it. The richest people should associate, huh? I've long heard of you. You may open a Jin Xianju or a Jia Yuju here in Ying, huh? so that we could entertain ourselves there. Uh, well, I am actually waiting for your words, Prince. Uh, let's talk uh, about say proper business first. Oh, what's proper? Don't worry, we have finished all that. Uh, may I ask you how much it will cost to open a shop here? So, Prince... Can I meet His Highness tomorrow? You have been here for a long time, and it would be impolite, really. Tonight, I will meet with His Highness and tell him. <laughs> Thank you very much. Huh? Come, 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 come. Cheers. Cheers. Good, good. Cheers. Cheers. Good evening, Your Highness. Please, meet the Chin Envoy. That's not your business. You won't meet him, then? The war has already started. We don't have to establish relations. So you're saying you are sure you'll win, Your Highness? I do not like your tone here. I'm sorry. Dismissed. Yes. Your Highness, I'd like to ask you, is your attitude firm because of others' advice? Sir, I don't have my own temper, or even my own opinion. You shouldn't be so hasty if you really have your own opinion. Zulan! Aren't you, you afraid that I would punish you? I'm not. What? The Just reason why I venture to speak out is that I cannot stand that you're surrounded by your so-called loyal officials. All they care about is triumph, rather than the fact the war is bad for your people. They will contribute and hunt for fame in spite of the injury to your state. And your poor people. <laughs> why does that good for nothing care about state affairs? 
I don't care about it, and I know clearly that I'm not good at it. Thanks to the flourishing and peaceful times of Chu, I don't need to neglect my meals and my sleep. However, the state will be in disaster if the war goes on, and I'm worried that those comfortable and wealthy days I know will be gone. <laughs> what? How dare you, you tell me this nonsense? What? I'm not good at those impassioned speeches. I can only speak the ugly truth or even selfish or struggling words because I don't care. I will tell you whatever I think, Your Highness. If you have something to say, then say it. I'm tired of your cynicism. Yes. You look ridiculous when you're serious. Chu borders on Qin in the west, joins Wei and Han in the north, and is adjacent to Qi in the east. The territories of these three places are in a state of instability. Wei and Han are afraid of Qin, so they are changeable. We can't ally with them. It's impossible. Qi praise themselves as a big power, but they don't qualify because they struggle for petty profits. And we look down upon them. Qin is a state of savages with a wild ambition for plotting against Chu. So they want to seek hegemon. However, for hundreds of years, they have never suppressed Chu. So we should stop the war if we're not sure if we can win or will lose. It will be good for you if it is good for the state. If it is not in Chu's best interest, you shouldn't send the army, Your Highness. What you said. Someone taught you this, right? Yes, indeed. I thought it was reasonable, so I'm telling it to you. Please, Your Highness, in my heart there is neither Chu nor its people, but there is the King of Chu and the royal household, because I'm a descendant of the Zhong family, so I only consider your welfare. Then you are concerned about your life of debauchery. I owe it all to you, Your Highness. You. How dare you say something like that? The public will condemn you! You know I am a good for nothing. Your Highness, it doesn't matter. What about Zhang Yi? Very well. With the soldiers Zhou Tu Mi Yuan sent to watch him, he won't be assassinated. Come again? If you insist on meeting him, I'm afraid assassins will kill him. Who directs them? It's hard for me to say. Call the Chin of Boy, Zhang Yi, to the palace! Greetings to your highness. How are you, Jin Premier? Thanks to you, I'm fine, highness. Please tell me, why are you here? To mend relations. Every time you come here, it's for our relationship. Chu and Chin are lucky to have a man like you to rush around for our friendship. <laughs> I'm embarrassed by this undeserved praise, but I rush around. That is true. All right. Today I will listen to your new words about the establishment of our state's relations. I was very tired because of hurrying on my way to Chu, so I expected to head back to Qin as soon as I delivered the letter of credence. Unexpectedly, you were so hospitable, I was invited to stay for the past few days, so I'm energetic now and in a good mood to talk. Go on. My king thinks highly of your highness. In the beginning, Chu was the state that I chose to serve, but unexpectedly we missed and things did not work out. As an official of Jin, I have been sent to Chu many times in the search of friendship instead of declaring war. The greatest trouble for Chin is Qi. We once launched an eastward fight but failed. Now we have new troubles caused, of course, by the state of Qi. Chin and Qi don't border on the frontier, but Qi has offended us again and again. They cast a covetous eye on Qin, and now they helped you to fight over our territory. You can take these cities as you like, and we won't complain about it, but what I'm afraid of 
is that Xi will take this opportunity to gain profit, hurt Qin, and, in turn, damage Chu. The Qi state does not wish to hurt you. <laughs> Chu occupies more than a dozen cities in Huai Si. Qi keeps them in mind and are plotting to take them. Qi would have taken them if they could. I know what you mean. However, I don't know if you understand that even though Qi covers Chu, this is not comparable to your real intentions for us. If you still hold such an opinion, we will become enemies soon. My king does not wish this, but we will have no choice. I hope you will think it over. Your Highness, if the war begins, our two states will be weakened. Very severe. Other states can then claim the spoils. You must be kidding. Chu and Qin are still fight. Who will be weak is still unknown. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. Why indeed does the Chu state attack Qin? <laughs> that is a funny question in this. Struggling society and you asking. <laughs> the question makes it funnier. This struggling society will be made chaotic by war. In order to survive, we have to fight, but that's not the case now. If Chu and Qi form an alliance, then it is hard to see if Qin can survive. You're right. The Qin may not be able to stand the, another Hangu battle. So you think you can persuade me to withdraw my army with your glib tongue? <laughs> no, not exactly. I do have other you know, gifts to offer. Oh, then I'm very curious about how much you're willing to pay for this. Chu is now attacking Shang and Yu, which makes Chu suffer a lot. So we have decided that we will cede Shang and Yu willingly to you. What's that? We will give you the 600 lei of land of Shang and Yu. They belong to us to begin with. So it is returning, not giving. Whatever, the Qin army won't hold them. So you can take them without losing a single Chu soldier. They will be yours. Are you serious? I wouldn't come here from thousands of miles away just to tell a lie to you. Everyone, what should we do to treat this? Great offer of Chin. Please think this over. Now Chin is squeezed by Chu and Chi. They have no choice but to see territory and ask for peace. I believe Qin never ceded territory before. After titling Zhang Yi as Qin Premier, Qin ceded territory to Wei and Han only for the policy of uniting, and they sent the army to get them back before too long. I'm afraid that this time Qin is purposely showing their weakness for another intention. Chu is different from Wei and Han. Shang and you belong to Chu originally, and we'll be back with Chu soon. If Qin wants to have them again, I'm afraid we'd have to resort to war. We can accept that Qin returns the land to build good relations, but as to whether we should withdraw, please listen to His Excellency, Duo Tu and the Premier. Huh. Had I known this, I would have gone straight to the front line in Chu Wo and discussed it with His Excellency the Premier and His Excellency Tao Tu. When we agreed on that, I would come here directly for your seal and signature. Hmm. It seems that you want to stir up tension in the court of Chu. When I was on my way here, Qin had started withdrawing the soldiers garrisoned in Shang and Yu, and sent some civil officials to measure the area of land and register the population for your sake. If the officials of Chu still hesitate, I'm afraid I'll have to go back to stop my king from withdrawing the Qin army. The opportunity lies at your feet, but ignore it and you can decide after the war. Goodbye. Just wait a minute. Do you have something else to say? 
Take off your premier seal, please. We will sign the treaty and the title. Chu will stop the war and withdraw the army. Are you creating difficulties for me? What do you mean? As soon as we arrived in the outskirts of Ying, we were captured by your army. And all the related seals and documents were lost. I don't know if it's because I was too careless or the Chu army was too careful. Nothing has been returned yet. How could this be? You were humiliated by them. It's a misunderstanding. Surely, if you are doubtful about the sincerity of Qin, you can send someone with me to go to Qin and we'll sign the treaty in Shenyang. Great. Then when it's signed and settled, Chu will withdraw the army. I'm afraid that that will be far too late. What do you mean? Please withdraw the army right now, Your Highness. Qin has promised to see the cities and will make an announcement to the public. I can't believe you to be truly sincere if you insist on that paper. It is Premier Chen Zhen. <laughs> it's been a long time. How are you? Go and see if the carriage outside is ready. Why are you here? It's been a long time. As you said, so I pay you a visit. Your words mean more. Please. What do you want to say to me? Are you serious? About Sidi, the territory. Why are you asking about that? Don't forget your identity, Chen Zhen. Those who break their word won't conquer other states. If this is why you've come, you can leave now. Because of your impassioned words, I've come to Chu. As a guest, official of Chu. But really, I'm Chin's spy. Do you feel wrong in some way? Do you remember how you persuaded me? The heavens could not bear it if such a fatuous king rules. To avoid disaster, Chin becomes a state of no scruples. Do you think such a state should rule the world? I have no choice. Forgive me, please. You would drink poison to stop your thirst. When it's hot water as nectar, who cares whether or not it is poison if it stops the thirst? At this moment, you despise me. But in the next moment, you will view me in a new light. I don't know what to say to that. Do you want? To disappoint the expectations of the Chin? I think I'm hateful. Everyone in the two courts a fool. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so relaxed. Such a big and powerful state, actually, has such an unsuspectable king. Very well said. If they really wanted to eliminate Qin, they should have done so when the army, the five states, amassed in Hangu passed. However, Chu was treacherous and arbitrarily withdrew their army. And now Qin is weak. They want to turn a profit. <laughs> As a large area of land will soon be returned. He hesitated and withdrew his army again. <laughs> you sympathize with him. I won't expose your stratagem. 
that I have to decline the mission from Qin. Qin Zhen? and give our whole life to the state we serve. We should not care what others think. What I mean is, the Qin state wants to conquer other states. I won't... Serve it if it is treacherous. In this, we have nothing in common. Take care. Premier. And I will report it to my king when I am back in Chu. Wonderful. We've maintained our relationships for hundreds of years and can't ruin them. <laughs> Doctor, how is the Qin Premier? And who are you? I'm the envoy who came here with him. Oh, he's regained consciousness. Is he badly hurt? No, it is not serious. Thank you.
Zhang Yi won Chu over with an empty promise. As for Han, he tempered justice with mercy. The frontier of Qin became less dangerous, and King Hui Wen of Qin showed his great foresight and designated General Sima Tuo to lead the army to conquer Ba Chu. If Qin could get to fertile farmland of Ba Chu, it could then placate them with a policy of conciliation, develop water conservancy, and build cities. Ba Chu would then be the second land of abundance after the Guan Zhong Plain. It would also serve as a strong material basis for Qin, allowing Qin the freedom to conquer other states at will. Who's the person who changed my trading name? Innkeeper, calm. <laughs> the Premier did this. He says the name Phoenix Inn means that birds will gather in the court. This new name is paying blessings to Chin. He has his reasons. <laughs> All right, how about our business recently? Uh, a few days ago, it was pretty good. Those invoices that came new, it was run by the Premier's wife, but Yi Wei's Jin Tian Ju reopened. They went there. He's undercutting us. Yes, he is. A snob like him. I never liked him. How dare he be so mean to us? You're right. Innkeeper, shall we ask someone to smash up his juice and juice? Yes. You can take responsibility. What? Well, forget it then. <sighs> or maybe... We could sell the inn, and you can go back and get married, live a good life. No, no. I fall in love with Chen Yang. However, the premier wants me to close. He always says that a tall tree catches the wind. Excuse me. Is this the Xuanxu Inn? Huh? Innkeeper, we have guests. <laughs> good day. Do you want to check in? Excuse me, is this in run by the wife of the Premier? Well, yes. Where do you come from? The South. From Chu. May I move my luggage into the inn, please, madam? You'd better find another inn because we have shut down ours. Sorry. Innkeeper, it, it's not that easy to get business. Please allow us to stay. Your Excellency, there are inns everywhere in Xiangyang. Why would we only stay here at mine? I'm an old friend of the Qin Premier, so I must visit you at your inn, madam. Uh, hey, come, 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 come. This way, this way. Please, come, come, come. Hurry, hurry, innkeeper. <laughs> you must be tired. Your Excellency, I will prepare dishes. The dishes, please enjoy. Yes, that's quite old. Yes. Yes, the Premier comes here well, often. He did before, but now he doesn't. Oh, why is that? <laughs> he married the innkeeper, so he doesn't need to come here anymore. <laughs> Has the Premier been here recently, though? No, no. Just now. I saw the wife of the Premier. Does she still run the inn and manage the business here? <laughs> for now, I'm afraid that she cannot keep the inn. If not for you, we'd close it. <laughs> I heard the Premier is ill. Don't know. Uh, I haven't paid a visit to the Premier for a long time, so I don't know. <laughs> Please, help yourself. <laughs> I have to work. Help yourself. The mountain road is dangerous, and the Shu army is unpredictable. But we have to march forward. To trouble you, 
to risk your lives. Great. Good luck, everyone. You. Fall out. To the rear. No. You disobey? I passed the test. For men of sacrifice. I should fight in the vanguard with the rest. I didn't see it. It doesn't count. I'm willing to have a contest with these pit soldiers now. Nonsense. I will go back. As long as one of you beats me. You, fall out. One more, please. to stop me? How Come dare on. I? What's wrong? Scared? Oh. Say that one more time and I'll hit you. Take him. What's wrong? He's the prince. You know that if something happens to him, then it's... You're thinking too much. Fine. Then you take it, huh? Squad leader. I'll follow you. Huh? Good. Great! You can learn many things from him, but be careful. In case 
He steals your lamb leg. My oh. lamb leg, eh? Oh, Ask yeah. him. He'll tell you. <coughs> ah. It's yeah. an army it's term. Easy. I'll tell you later. Hey. I have dried meat. Do you have wine? Can we drink in barracks? Oh. Of course we can't. You're not qualified to eat it because of your rank. Really? Only those above squad leader eat meat. What? What are you doing? The general. Won't punish me if I violate the discipline, but my father will. You could have given it to me! Move! 